Papi Chulo, camera is sabalicious on the beat. Um, <laughs> uh, date is 6.30, and filter is Brita, like the, the, like the water filters. I had to explain that one, I'm sorry. Has anyone ever been to an experience like this? Like a random, like... <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you for this. No, thank you, honestly. This is very like a nerve wracking, weird experience for me too <laughs> as well. But I just didn't know if anybody's ever been just give me like pointers maybe, like, no, you're doing bad. <coughs> All right. Wanna clap? Do you wanna do this? Do yeah. Yeah, okay. let's let's have you. Do I where do I face? All right. Do I face on this? And then where are you gonna put it? Just yeah, put it like right. There. Alright, now? Woohoo! <laughs> Take one! <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is the very first segment of Hot Tamale presented by Radio Rejects. I don't really know where this is gonna go. This is a strange experience for all of us that's in the crowd. Thank you for everyone that came out. Um, it's gonna be a, a, a weird experience, a little roller coaster. We're gonna do interviews, performances, and then we're gonna get into a very, very spicy challenge that is um, an ode to the show Hot Ones. Um, did I say Hot Ones or Hot Tamale? This is Hot Tamales, <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be an ode to Hot Ones. Um, so all the sauces are here. If you know them, if you've ever seen the show, it's where they ask questions to the guests. Um, and as the questions go on, the sauces progressively get hotter and hotter. Um, our first guest, as we do as any episode of Radio Rejects, which is a podcast, it's a, it's a platform that we wish to provide to artists that we've come across and provide them with content so that they can, you know, put it on their social media or have it so they can show other people and, and kind of be like a neat experience and, and interview them and, and see what they're all about. Um, as we always do, we introduce ourselves. We'll do that for every portion of this night. My name is Lou Feedy. Um, I am one of the hosts. To the left is the man of the sounds, as always. DJ Seb. Smooth. And we always like to allow our guests to introduce themselves. Give us your, your name that you, you like to go by as far as uh, what you do and what you're presenting to the to table today. Because we have an artist of like every kind of thing sure. we think of. So. Yeah, um, I'm Shuba. The sh is like sugar, right? Um, and I'm a singer-songwriter. I really like like R&B-inspired pop music. Yeah. Which is kind of like an influence for the, um, the recent EP that you did. Yeah. Correct? Um, yep, I just put out an EP called Around Me, and it's on Spotify and iTunes and Amazon and Apple Music, and I have CDs for you guys in case someone still listen to CDs. I have stickers, yeah. The CDs is kind of like a, are you gonna sign them too? I could. Oh, good. <laughs> if you have a, if I'll, you have a I'll marker. take one, I'll definitely take one. <laughs> okay, so for the recent project though, um, that came out and it has four songs on it, correct? Yep. It's very emotional. Yes. Is it, when you write songs, is that something that kind of, uh, obviously you get two aspects of it. You get artists that, is, that are really good at coming with like a melody and then they'll write to a beat. Mm -hmm. Or is it something that you've worked with uh, a producer in particular and always kind of continue to work with them and, and you're writing to those? Where, how do you start a project? I'm a huge melody person. Like melody, bass, and like drums are like, that's like the most important thing every time I start a song. So for me, like some of the songs on the EP, it, like, took, it took me two years to kind of make it happen. And two of the songs were kind of written, I don't want to say last minute, but like, a month or two before I actually put out the EP. Um, and I thought it was going a very different direction, but it's it can kind of just vary. I mean, music doesn't really, you don't make, like, music kind of happens to you sometimes. So 
for me, it's like a lot of the melodies will come to me like when I'm in the shower. Like I take long showers just so I can get ideas sometimes. <laughs> and then like when I'm on the bus, I'll just like randomly come up with something. Like my phone is full of voice memos of just like random ideas. Um, sometimes I'll read a story that like really inspires some sort of emotion. Like I'll literally be crying and then like write a song about it, even if it's not my own experience. Um, sometimes someone will just send me a beat and I just like will just loosely just start singing something over it and I just have to write to it. So it, it just kind of happens in, in very different ways. And then sometimes like I actively sit there trying to write. So I now mean, does it start off like mumbling? Like is where you're just uh -huh, yeah, yeah, I, or do you actually have like that's a really good line and you just write down that line? Sometimes sometimes there's like lines that really just like stick out to me. Um, but most of the time it's like I'll mumble over some track, just some melody line then I'll put words last. But some people do it the exact opposite. Like some people can't put melody to like words and some people can't put words to melody, so. And you also, if I'm not incorrect, um, you play piano too as well? I can kind of accompany myself. I'm like, I played piano for some time and then I kind of stopped for a while. And then lately I've actually been like practicing for like an hour a day. So I'm just trying to like get back into it. Yeah. Is this something that you want to kind of incorporate in your shows too as well? Yeah, I just, I think like, especially guitar, I think I want to get back into guitar. Piano is a little tricky because like you're kind of behind something and you're like away from everyone, but guitar is cool because you can be like really up front and like just, I don't know, still be present. Like there's not a wall between you, but I kind of, I just write to both things. I'm just trying to like learn which one fits best. What's your, um, as far as like the songs on the, the project, um, Stupid is the one that has a video for it. Mm -hmm. Or is, is there any more? Because of like when you find nowadays, at least for the, the projects that are coming out, they're very short, very straight to the point, yeah. um, and, and kind of compact. There's not like a plethora of songs on there. Do you find that when you have a shorter period, like a, a shorter uh, project, you're more likely to, to make videos for all the songs? Or is it just kind of that was just the one that you really wanted to push for more? It was just the single. I mean, it was the single, so it kind of felt right to make a video. And I feel like. I really just wanted a video where, I don't know, have you ever like heard a song and then like you envision what the video might be like and then you watch the video and it's nothing like what you thought it would be? Um, I kind of wanted that with Stupid because it was kind of my introduction. I've been waiting so long to put out music because I was so picky and so scared about it. And I kind of just wanted this video to be like, this is me, I'm Shuba, like, and it's just me on a couch, like, tossing my hair around. It's like a like skyline. <laughs> You're yeah, in, like, a very like, nice, I could like never <laughs> afford that type of building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of, like, it's just, like, me, you know? And, like, I just think, like, it's really, there was, like, this, there's obviously, like, a story in the song, but I just kind of wanted to be, like, okay, this is me, this is what I look like, like, this is how I feel about the song, like, this is the emotion I'm conveying, and then, um, other videos, I really do try to tell stories. I just like, for another act another song on the EP, I'm actually working on the video, which is gonna be way more of a story. So it just kinda depends on the song. Tear Soak Pillow? Actually, I'm making an acoustic video to that tomorrow. That's a very like emotional song. Yeah, actually that was one of the songs I wrote. So yeah, I mean, I like there, there was something in my hometown like many years ago where like there was like a drunk driving accident and like the whole, like it was a very small town. So like the whole town was like devastated. And then many years later, I like, I was reading a poem and I read a poem that like had something to do with that story. And I just like started crying. <laughs> and then I like wrote the song. Yeah, cause I have to like, so. obviously when I research, I have to like listen to all the music and. Oh, I appreciate it. And I get, you know, I get kind of overwhelmed because sometimes I'm listening to them and like if it's sad, like I get sad too. <laughs> and it like messes That's up my point. whole day. I'm like, why is she? <laughs> so it's like a really like a uh, emotional song. I mean, like a lot of the songs are very emotional driven, but that one, it was almost like there, you can tell with some artists, there are songs that are very generalized mm -hmm. and there's some where it's like, okay, that was obviously something that was yeah. particular to affecting yeah. her, him, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for that one, it was something that, you you kind of uh, felt a connection to yeah i just think like i don't know i don't really know what it's just like it it just felt right i mean i feel like i wrote the whole thing in like 20 minutes or something and i feel like when something just kind of takes over you so much that you just like 
it was the middle of a school night. Like, I had stuff due the next day, but I was like, this is important. And I, like, stayed up and just, like, wrote it. Like, nobody asked me to do that. And then I just, I really liked it. I mean, I just, like, felt very connected to it. And, and then I, like, took a little Instagram snippet of it. And I was like, do you guys think I should finish this? And, like, a lot of people were like, yeah, you should. So um, I, like, finished the song. And, yeah. That's good. Um, now, as far as, like, obviously, you probably get asked this all the time. But if you go back to your like researching your videos and everything like that, you have your um, your period where you were on uh, American Idol. Do you get tired of that? Like, is that something where it's like, okay, like I'm past that, or is it something like that was that was a part of who I was? It's a little bit of both. I think I'm trying to get to the point where I'm kind of. Like, TV shows are so, what word, I don't know what word I'm looking for. It's just kind of cheesy. Like, when you've been on a TV show, it's kind of like, oh, you were on a pageant. Like, you kind of just, like, get branded with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was always a dream to be on American Idol. I never wanted to win. I just wanted to be on it really, really badly. And, it, you know, I, I've kind of, like... You gotta know when to use it though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it helps people take you more seriously when you're like, I was on American Idol, versus like, it's a lot harder to kind of get that same recognition without sometimes. Yeah. But, I mean, it is something that I'm definitely like, working through. I don't wanna be known for having been on a TV show. I don't wanna, you know, a lot of people are like, why don't you go on The Voice? And like, that's when I'm like, oh God. The funniest thing is when I'm at a coffee shop, like I sing all the time and I'll just be like singing while getting my food and somebody will be like, girl, you should be on American Idol. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I don't know, it's just, but I think you should just be proud of who you are though. At the end of the day, like mm -hmm. a lot of artists that we know today, like Ed Sheeran was on some like random show when he was younger, Tori Kelt, like all these people were like on shows and on things that they like, maybe are trying to distance themselves from. And I think like if you wear, I said this before, but if you wear your insecurities and like everything that's happened to you, like armor, like you don't feel bad about it. It's okay. just a part of who you are, so. Do you, uh, now as far as like for, for that, how do you feel you progressed from there? Because I remember, I remember watching it and it is something that people will mention obviously with you. It's, yeah. it's like anything else, like oh. Yeah. It's, um, it's like a, almost like an accomplishment. It is an accomplishment, you, like, you advanced. It was like a, a big thing as far as like for you being a young person, an artist and being able to achieve that. What do you feel is something, not necessarily from there, but that your progression you wanna achieve? Is it some of like the, the awards? Is it having a, a record on top 100? What, what is it really that you, you seek out? A lot of artists are gonna give you different answers. Yeah, I, I used to think like, I've, I've changed so much in like what I've wanted. And like, I realized I was being so close-minded before. Like before I just wanted to be a singer. And then I got an idol and I was like, oh, I'm already a singer. Like I don't need someone to tell me I'm a singer. And then I was like, I wanna be an artist. And then I'm like being an artist. And then I feel like it just changes. And then I was like, oh, I want to win a Grammy someday. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking like bigger. And I'm just like, it's not, you know, I, I just wanna entertain. Like I realize I really love making like obnoxious, obnoxious Snapchat videos and Instagram videos. And I realize like, I wanna do way more than just saying like, I wanna be a voiceover actress. I wanna like help other artists rise. I wanna like be an advocate for like mental health for people cause that's kind of important. <laughs> um, I wanna, I just wanna entertain. Your um, videos are pretty funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like I watched them and I was like, it's, it's, it's random. Cause like a lot of people consider like, uh, they wanna be almost, some people would rather like to be seen as one thing and then I see you just being goofy, <laughs> and it's funny. Like there was like advice for like, you did one where it was like, I mean, you have to look. She'll give you the I'll give you the, how to the get through social life. media yeah. handles, and you can watch them. But there was like one where it's like if someone asks, "What are you doing after school?" Graduation. <laughs> and I was just dying. I was like, work, just watching it. So it was, it's funny. Like I mean, it's it's good because <clears throat> I think with social media, it allows you to express yourself even more than the music could, because the music is, is yeah. very limited. Unless you're making a ton of music and you're releasing it all the time, mm -hmm. you, at least with social media, your Twitter, your uh, your Instagram, even Snapchat, you're, you're allowed to kind of, at any moment, drop something 
and capture it and put it away. So what do you think you your your target is is mainly as far as like for social media? Because it's it's a dirty Yeah, it's a it's it's hard too because once you start succeeding, people are gonna start using that as a platform to attack you to or whatever attack it may you, be. Yeah. <laughs> what do you feel you have the most fun on though? Is it like, like Snapchat media? or is I it love Instagram. I don't know what it is. I feel like Instagram is your resume. Like your stories go away after some time. Like Snapchat's fine, but like people, it's like it seems very exclusive. Whereas like on Instagram, it's like all my networking is done through Instagram. It's so weird. Like people reach out on Instagram, people will find you. Even if you only get 100 plays on a video, someone can find you and literally be like, I really like this content. And it's so easy to just connect with people. And I, I really do think I'm a very visual person. Like I mm -hmm. love videos, I love pictures. And I think it's just a great platform for producers, engineers, singers, models, makeup artists. Like. I don't know, I just, I feel like you can be yourself. Like someone said it really well, like a couple months ago. Someone said they'll love the music, like people will like the music, but they'll love you. And like, once I realized that, I was like, oh, like, and you I'm just gonna be video. unapologetically myself. Like look at Cardi B, right? Like, I mean, I didn't even know she made music. I just saw her Instagram and then I was like, oh, okay, okay, she made the song, but it's like, I mean, she's enough. huge but off that's of that. enough for me. Yeah, it's like she, in she empowers me to like, be myself like yeah. when i think like oh do i not have enough makeup on to post this video like am i saying stuff like am i being a loser like i don't care like i just post it you know and i feel like because people's attention spans are so limited you get that like 15 seconds on instagram and then it's gone you know and the people who love you will keep watching and the ones who don't they just go away or they'll keep watching i have haters who watch my videos still you can see everyone. She's like, I know who they are. <laughs> it's just, it's oh, so, cur. it's so funny. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny when you're like, when like you know someone doesn't like you, but like, have you ever seen that like people like will watch your stuff, and then you're like, oh, at least like this still benefits me, you know? So I don't know. I just think it's like, I, I just I love Instagram. Now that's what do the you? Thesis. <laughs> that's the commercial. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel is like as far as like um. um the the pros and cons of that I've asked another artist in the, in the past where it with the social media providing a lot of publicity and, and exposure it also hinders your ability to have privacy so mm -hmm. at, at some point or another you had these rock stars were back in the day that were it was almost like exclusive like you you didn't see they only there was only like pictures of them in the background and everything like that you didn't get to see all of it um, but as far as like now you have the social media and they're able to, you're able to, you almost get exposed all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that kind of takes away from it or gives more, um, more feeling to the artist and their profile? I think it puts a lot of pressure on artists these days, but actually I wrote a whole thesis on this actually. For school? <laughs> yeah, for school. Like I literally wrote about like how like today's digital age is like so different from like what it was before, right? But I think, Okay, personally for me, it's fun because I'm a very transparent person. Like literally my backpack is like, you can see everything in it. Like, <laughs> like it's I was about to say, can I, we turn the I'm camera? I'm very just like, <laughs> I like, I, I can literally sit by a stranger on the bus and if they ask me about my entire childhood, like I will tell, like I don't really have much to hide. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, but I definitely think it adds pressure. Like even if you're like a newcomer to the scene, um, you, you like feel you have to post every day. That's kind of annoying. There's you like know? that requirement almost. Like you gotta post a lot to get the yeah, attention. Yeah, it's like it's both. It's like if you post too much, like people are like, ah, she posts too much. If you don't post enough, they're like, oh, where have you been? Mm -hmm. And then it's it just kind of adds pressure. But I think like the kind of content, I think people need to just be like again. I keep saying it, but like just be themselves. Like what things are important to you. For me, it's very easy. Taco Bell, pizza. <laughs> and my friends and music. Like I, like there's only so few things that like are so important. So I just like keep talking about this stuff, so. And yeah. as far as like for your, cause we finished this project, you obviously hold on to it as much as you can. You'll start making more uh, songs, releases and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you start working on the next thing? We, we talked like before we even started, you ha you're gonna perform an unreleased song yeah, tonight. Yeah. Okay. So and when do you, when do you release things as single or do you kind of go into every project thinking it's going to be a concept? You know, like, I, I, I know exactly no. where it's going to start. No, I don't. I don't. Like, the fact that I put on an EP was, like, 
I decided like two or three months before that I was going to do an EP. And, like the idea of putting out an EP is very stressful because it feels like you have to have a whole story and concept put together, which is why I may never release an album, like ever. <laughs> but like, I don't, I don't know. I think I've already been working on new stuff. Like I like write almost every day, um, and I'm just going to put out a ton of singles. You so don't want to release an album ever? I, like, That's like okay, a weird thing to say as an artist. But now it's kind of common, it's right? No you don't common have to. Because my attention span is so, like, I personally can't remember the last time I listened to an entire album. I will honest. I think the last album I, like, bought and listened to whole way through was Eminem Recovery. That was years ago. I and, like, love this interview. And, <laughs> I, <laughs> and I love music, but, like, I'm also, like, a singles person. Like, I mean, like, I don't know, I feel like artists can't, like, there's some artists, yes, who can put out, like, huge projects, and, like, yeah, like, you can, like, people will appreciate every piece, and, like, it's great to have a concept, but for me personally, like, I might have a song that's, like, this vibe, and then, like, I might have a song that's, like, telling kind of a different story. I don't want to write up, like, 13 songs telling kind of the same story. And it almost hinders people's ability to listen to it and just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, this doesn't fit the pattern. Like, yeah, exactly. And it's, like, stressful because then it's like, oh, now I have to write another one that's going to fit the story. And, like, I don't know. I mean, like, just put out put out what you want, you know? If you mm. want to put out an album and you have a very clear idea of what you want to say, I respect that. And, like, Destina does that. I'm very proud of her. But, like, some people, like, know how to do that. I just, like, for me, it's around me was, like, oh, was fine because I – kind of sat with these songs and I was like okay they're all kind of telling the story of people who are close to me like people I love like things that happened to me this year things that like made me feel some sort of emotion um but yeah I feel like I'm am I answering these questions sometimes I feel like we started <laughs> is here she? Is she answering and then the I'm just round like of applause <laughs> if she's answering the <laughs> very good thank you I just needed that so I can cough. I just had to cough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're answering. The answers are subject to anybody. I mean, it really is. A, as That's why I think like with a, a platform like a podcast or whatever it may be, even podcasts, that's like a very random thing. Before it was like, I remember yeah. listening to people like my parents and they'll listen to like a talk show and like, you guys mm. are boring. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> now it's like, it's nice. No, you yeah. get, I get to like actually hear someone um, legitimately like plays your stuff all the time has a chance to hear you talk about that. And it's not just about the music, it's about your personal, like, so I love Taco Bell are. too, and then yeah. like, it's like a random little thing. Um, so it's juggling music, school, you just finished school. I right? graduated. Yes, another Thank round you. of applause for that. <laughs> yes. Juggling all those, so you released this within the, the in the midst of that school. So what, what do you feel is, is uh, as far as for artists, it hinders their ability to kind of like create because there's so many things mm -hmm. that you're consumed by with with work. A lot of people have mm -hmm. these nine to fives as mm -hmm. far as upcoming yeah. um, artists and they work swing shifts, whatever it may be. And, and they're still trying to make it. What do you think is kind of the best? Let's let's take it this way. What would you give advice to artists that is in your shoes or looking to progress into what you're doing right now? It depends on what you want with music. I mean, some people, like, I'm going to think about this before I respond this time. You're asking, like, my advice to people who are trying to juggle these things or, like? Yeah, just your over with your experience in general, if you can go back to yourself five years in the past and give yourself advice, like, it's going to make it a lot more easier if you just do it this way, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah, I, yeah, there's so many things I look back and I'm like, oh, that was um, I don't know. I think it's just, so there's half of me is like everything that happens in life, not happens for a reason, but like fits in the scheme that it is supposed to happen. Like if it's kind of meant to be, it will, it will happen and it'll happen when you least expect it. So part of me is like, okay, me going to college was because I had to go to college and like me being on idol and like not making it, like not winning happened for a reason, you know, but, and then another part of me is just like, it's all random. And, like, it doesn't matter. So, I don't know. It's just, I think if you really want something, though, you you do have to make sacrifices and just kind of just kind of do it. Like, that. I guess that, that would be my advice is, like, I feel like anyone in this world can get anything they want, but I just think sometimes they don't, like, they're, they're afraid to step outside of their comfort zone. 
like it was very uncomfortable putting my first single out like that's like for me it's like being naked you know it's like this is stuff that I've like written it's very personal to me and like now I'm putting it on this platform sorry I have a pee filter uh, where like everyone can like judge me and say oh like oh should I just release that like it was okay you know like you're putting yourself up to so much scrutiny and you kind of have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and like with anything whether you're trying to be a CEO or like I don't know like whatever you want to do like you have to you have to make yourself uncomfortable and I think that's my biggest advice is like yeah it was it was very uncomfortable like I you know, didn't want to put songs out at some point. I, like, didn't want to play shows because I was, like, afraid that people would judge me. I didn't want to make an EP because I thought people were expecting me to get, like, 20 million plays the first time around. Yeah. And so it's just kind of, like, it kind of feels like a lot of pressure, and I think you just kind of have to, like, put your head down and just do it and, you know, be, be like, okay with being uncomfortable. Now for tonight. Mm-hmm. Going to segue into the, the shows. Yeah. Segue into them. You're performing. Oh. What songs? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm performing the one that's playing in the back. It's called Stupid. Um, should I talk about the song or? Yeah. Or go wh ahead. While I perform. This is no. You want to do? You want to explain it while you perform it? What am I gonna say while I perform? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. This verse is about someone. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. So the first one I'm performing is Stupid. Um, the second one is uh, a cover of a song I really love, and I'm actually filming a video for that tomorrow, too. Um, and the third one is an unreleased song that's just like, I'm just going to say it's a crowd favorite, so, you know, I just got to just gotta throw it out all the time. I really like that it's song. It's a crowd favorite? It's a crowd favorite, you know. Y'all better show up, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> better make sure you, you favorite this song. <laughs> All okay. right, go ahead and, and <laughs> outro yourself. Give them your social medias, everything that yeah. they can find you at. You can find me at S-H-U-B, as in boy, A, music, um, on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on Snapchat. It's like RGBQT, so I don't know. I have a story. Come to me later. Um, Facebook, just S-H-U-B-A. My website is S-H-U-B-A dash or hyphen music dot com. Check it out. Um, yeah, and then on Spotify, it's just Shuba, and there's another Shuba who is an EDM artist who I'm, like, trying to get him to change his name. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's not him. Yeah, that's me. I look like a little coconut. Um, yeah. yeah, so there's really anywhere. And I have, like, stickers if anyone wants stickers. I'll take one. Um, we'll put it up right here, too. Should put it, oh, well, we'll start the performance now. <laughs> um, and then as far as always, every episode, even though we, I, you guys are going to stick around for the next one, we end the episode so we can cut it. Uh, my name is Lou. This is Radio Rejects. And Sab, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Sam. Thanks, Lou, for having me. Thank you. Thank you.